the victims of the Toronto van attack include a grandmother and an avid volunteer Toronto and 80-year-old grandmother who loved Toronto sports teams nearly as much as her own family and a brilliant young woman who volunteered to build houses in the Dominican Republic were among the 10 people killed when a van plowed down a Toronto sidewalk. Other victims in Monday's attack included people from Jordan and South Korea, as well as a local college student. Though the names of most of the victims weren't immediately released, details began emerging about several of them as their families began mourning and memorials in their honor grew larger. Police also confirmed that the victims were predominantly female, and said they would take into account a cryptic Facebook message that included references to violence against women, Buzz Iron News reports. Toronto City Councillor Cesar Colossi only identified one of the victims as 30-year-old Anne Marie Canico, who worked at Invesco, an investment management firm near the attack. Colossi only said Canico was a friend of his daughter, and he remembers her as a brilliant young girl who was interested in improving society. Colossi only said he spoke with the Amico's parents, who live in his ward. You can imagine the nightmare, the living nightmare they're going through at this moment he said. Hamiko volunteered at a Canada-based international humanitarian charity called Live Different. She helped build houses in the Dominican Republic in 2015 and 2017, according to Dave Hamilton, the charity's manager of school partnerships. He remembered her always smiling and being super positive and funny. He said she was always up for a challenge and really wanted to help people out. Hamiko also volunteered with the non-profit Tennis Canada Association, working at the Rogers Cup tournament since she was 12. She started out as a ball girl and worked her way up to be an integral part of the volunteer team, most recently leading a committee on stadium control, the association said. She was voted Volunteer of the Year in 2016 also killed in the attack was Dorothy Sewell, an 80-year-old grandmother who was an avid sports fan, said her grandson, Elwood Delaney. Delany, of Kamloops in British Columbia, posted on Facebook that he had to tell his three children and his wife that they will no longer get to talk to Nam on birthdays or holidays. He said his grandmother almost had as much love for the Blue Jays and the Maple Leafs as she did for her family. You will always be lucky and your love for sports will always be with me while I cheer with you, he wrote on Facebook. Go Toronto Go! Love you Nam! Two of Sewell's neighbors, Paul and David Lean Matusiewicz choked back tears at a shrine of flowers on Yonggi Street, where they were paying their respects. They had found out Sewell was among the victims just a half hour before arriving at the memorial. She was just the sweetest soul, Paul Matusiewicz said. Others killed included Munir Nightyard, a citizen of Jordan who was in Toronto visiting family, according to state-run news agency Pika. Jordan's embassy in Ottawa is in contact with Nightyard's family, the agency said. No other information about Nightyard was released. Seneca College said one of its female students was killed, but declined to identify her, citing privacy reasons. President David Bagnew confirmed the death in a female to students and staff in which he said two other students suffered minor injuries that did not require hospitalization along with the rest of the city and world. We were stunned by yesterday's news, Bagnew said. Two South Koreans were among the dead, Yonhap News Agency reported, citing government officials. A third South Korean national was injured. None of their names were released. The Korean Consulate General Office in Toronto declined to confirm the report. Investigators had not yet officially identified any of those who died as of Tuesday afternoon said Dirk Huey, Ontario's chief coroner. We are always balancing the need to know and the desire to know quickly to ensure that we have 100% accuracy, he said. That takes time, and that time can be very frustrating. Toronto resident Constantin Bullich created an impromptu memorial to the victims by taping for large sheets of poster board to a wall near the scene of the crime so people could leave messages of condolences and hope. By Tuesday afternoon, Dozens of sheets were filled with notes in various languages. Floral bouquets covered the wall's top edge and had begun covering the ground below. People have been traumatized by this, said Gulich, a 37-year-old dental hygienist. This is a time when we need to come together and I think people sense it.